In this video, we're going to be going over the following problem. What is the area of the green shaded region in this figure composed of four squares? Now, this problem was created by Katriona Ag on Twitter. I'll have the link to the original problem in the description below. And with that being said, let's jump right into this problem. Like the problem says, this figure is composed of four squares. The largest square is in the bottom left, the smallest one is on the top left, and then we have two equally sized squares on the right, and the goal is to find the area of the green shaded region, that is the area of the small square plus the area of the larger square. Now let's start off by assigning some variables to the side lengths of our squares. Let's say the side length of the medium sized squares is A, and that the side length of the smallest square is B. And now we should be able to write the side length of the largest square in terms of a and b. Notice that the height of the entire figure is a plus a, so 2a, which means the side length of the larger square must be 2a minus b. Now let's try to write a general formula for the area of the green shaded region in terms of a and b. So the area of the shaded region is going to be the area of the smallest square, which is b squared, plus the area of the larger square, which is 2a minus b whole squared. So we have b squared, and now if we expand the 2a minus b whole squared term out, we get 4a squared minus 4ab plus b squared. Now if we add together the b squared terms, we get 4a squared minus 4ab plus 2b squared. And now we can factor out a 2 from every term in this expression because that will make this problem a little bit easier later on. So if we factor out that 2, we get 2 times 2a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Now we have a nice formula for the area of the green shaded region in terms of a and b. But to convert this to an actual number, we're going to have to use the fact that this line segment is of length 2. We know this is a 90 degree angle because the shape is a square, and so as you can see, we've formed this right triangle here with the pink line as its hypotenuse. Now we can apply the Pythagorean theorem here if we know the lengths of the legs of this triangle. This leg is going to be of length A because that's the side length of this square, and what about the length of this leg? Well that's just going to be A minus B. Now if we apply the Pythagorean theorem, we get that a squared plus a minus b whole squared equals 2 squared. So on the left hand side we have a squared plus and then if we expand this whole squared term out we get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared equals 2 squared which is 4. Now if we combine the a squared terms we get that 2a squared minus 2ab plus b squared equals 4. And the left hand side of this equation should look familiar because we have that exact expression in our formula for the area of the shaded region. We know 2a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is equal to 4, so we can plug in 4 for the expression inside the parentheses. And if we do so, we get that the area of the shaded region is 2 times 4 which is 8. Right, so that's one way to solve this problem. That solution is more algebraic. But we can also approach this problem in a more abstract manner. Recall that the only information this problem gave us was that the length of this line segment is 2. Let's give this line a name. Let's call it CD, where C is the corner the left two squares share, and where D is one of the corners the right two squares share. Notice that the problem doesn't tell us the side lengths of any of the squares. And what that suggests to me is that the area of the green shaded region depends only on this line segment CD and not on the actual side lengths of the squares. And if that's the case, why don't we just draw ourselves a more convenient figure where all four squares are of the same size? Because in that case, CD would just be the base of one of the squares and that would make the problem a whole lot easier. And here's what I mean by that. All right, so here's a new figure. In this figure, all four squares are of equal size and the reason we're just able to change the dimensions of the left two squares is because from the problem we determined that the area of the green shaded region does not depend on the side lengths of the squares. In this new figure, the line segment CD is just going to be the base of the top right square, and here's why. 
In this new figure, the point D is in the same spot, but recall that C is where the top right corner of the bottom left square and the bottom right corner of the top left square meet. So in our new diagram, C is going to be the point in the center right here. And so as you can see, in this figure, where all four squares are of equal size, CD is just the base of one of the squares. And this makes the problem a lot easier. We know CD has a length of 2, and if all of the squares are identical, then all of their side lengths must be 2 as well. That means the area of each of the squares is 4. And so as you can see, the area of the shaded region is just 4 plus 4, which is 8. And that's the same as the answer we got using the algebraic method. And so ultimately, what you see here is that so long as the line segment CD is of length 2, then the area of the green shaded region in a figure like this will be 8, regardless of the position of C and the dimensions of the squares. Alright, so that about wraps it up for this video. If you enjoyed it and made it this far, please do consider leaving a like and make sure to subscribe if you want to be notified when I post more content like this. And yeah, thanks for watching.